Hello and welcome to a look at my 150 gram and weight robot Johnny Mnemonic. The name comes from the 1995 sci-fi film Johnny Mnemonic starring Keanu Reeves. It's alright, much like this robot. The electronics for this robot are fairly simple, featuring N20 gear motors from Bristol Block Builders, a Malenki Nano combination receiver and ESC and a two cell LiPo. The micro servo, which actuates the flipper, is a 2S rated micro servo from Kingmax. You can see it working here. Due to the complexity of the weapon system, I didn't have much spare weight for armour. So it's pretty thin and minimal. This is 0.75 polycarbonate with some green vinyl wrapped over it. With the armour removed, you can see more of the components. Primary focus is the valve and the air tubing which connects to the ground itself and to the air tank. You get a better look at the six wheel drive system too. Here is the 2S battery and the fill valve. With the rear panel removed you get a better shot of the air tank which is a whippet canister with the fill valve glued to it. The end has been sealed with epoxy. At the back here you can see the two N20 gear motors and wedged underneath them is the Malenki Nano sitting centrally in the robot. To get a better look at the frame here's one of the old versions. As you can see it's pretty lightweight with not much space inside for all of the components. You can see the cutout on the back where the bottle sits in and all cutouts for tubing to run through as well. For the sake of clarity, here's a close-up of the six-wheel drive system. The gears are all 3D printed and the tyres are made from sticky back foam rubber which is glued onto the wheels. You can see there are bolts used as intermediate dead shafts, whereas the idler gears run on 3mm ball bearings. Now we're going to look at some components. Here are three RAMs, a double acting, a single acting, and a Lego RAM. This is a double acting RAM. So called because air has to go in one port for it to extend, and in order to retract it, it has to go into this second port, and the first vented. These aren't really useful for small robots, as you would need an extra valve to control the return. This is a single acting ram, which has one inlet for air and a spring inside the barrel to retract it. So air goes in the first port and it extends. Then once that pressure is let off, the spring allows it to return. This is a Lego ram that I use in Johnny Pneumatic. It is a double acting ram, but I'm using it as a single acting ram with some modification. What this means is I cut off one of the inlets and increase the bore on the other. I also increase the bore overall to 12mm. I also made myself a new seal with an o-ring and a 3D printed piece. The reason behind this was the stock rubber part wasn't able to handle the pressure I was running at and just deformed and jammed. Also because I was using a spring retract inside the ram it would foul on the rubber. Here you can see how effective that spring return is. Here are the rest of the components for the pneumatic system. There is a fill valve, which is just a one-way valve that lets you put air into a system and not let it out. There's the air tank, in this case a repurposed whippet, and the valve. Going logically through the system, we start at the fill valve, which is coupled to the air tank at the back. Air is pumped into this and is held in the tank. This is then connected to the firing valve through some air tube. Then, once the switch is depressed, the valve is open and allows air to transfer into the ram, firing it. The spring return then brings it back. Having a closer look at the ram will show you where the vent port is. This is where the inlet was cut off and drilled out. Here is how it's plumbed in from another angle. The servo which actuates this switch is hidden underneath.
And there you have it, a quick overview of Johnny Nomatic. It wasn't super in-depth, but it should have given some of you some ideas. Thank you very much for watching.